These are the people they're petitioning. These are all the people who have agreed who? to grant the half holiday that Robert Lowe asked for. So the first Saturday half holiday anywhere in Britain to which these 400 merchants agreed to grant was given the 10th of November, 1843. Oh, good Lord. Well, I can't... I mean... They're astonishing. And it's achieved by Robert Lowe. My great-great-grandfather. Absolutely. Ian knows that as a young man, Frank lived with his family in Manchester and that his father was a clerk called Robert Lowe's, Ian's great-great-grandfather. To find out more about Robert, Ian's heading back to Manchester. Ian, good to meet you, Martin. Very nice Welcome to, you. to Salford. I hear that you're interested in finding out something more about Robert Lowe's. Yeah. I found him in the census in 1841. Right. He was working as a clerk, but he had quite strong connections with this building here, which is the Salford Town Hall. I see. Salford Lyceum. The first and second of a course of lectures on humour and pathos by Mr. R. J. Lowes. Is this our Robert? Absolutely. And that lecture was given here, in this building, the Salford Town Hall. I don't know what year this is. 1843. So Robert would have been 27, he's still a young man. Each lecture was concluded with a dramatic illustration, a characters in which were creditably sustained by amateurs and members connected with the classes of the institution. Now, what institution? Well, that would be the Salford Lyceum. And Lyceum, is that from the same root as Lycée in French? Is, it means teaching of some sort. The Lyceums were all about making more of yourself, building your education, reading, writing, perhaps literary classes. Getting on, getting, improving yourself. Robert worked as a clerk, but he was one of the directors of the Lyceum and would have been very much involved in the government of the institution. Wow! By the 1840s, Manchester was the largest industrial city in the world. The textiles produced by its mills and factories were housed in hundreds of giant warehouses. Thousands of warehousemen were employed across the city to move stock in and out. And warehouse clerks, like Robert Lowe's, kept records of business. With no trade unions, a working day in the warehouse could last up to 15 hours, six days a week. A public meeting of salesmen, clerks, which Robert was, warehousemen and others, at which upwards of a thousand persons attended. Mr. R. J. Lowe's, Robert, honorary secretary, having read an address to the employers, praying their consent to the closing of warehouses on Friday afternoon. What Robert's trying to do is to persuade three or four hundred of the leading merchant princes of Manchester to allow the clerks and warehousemen to have a half holiday without any reduction in pay, the kind of thing that no other workers at this time would have had. So this is something quite new, really, quite radical. Manchester had become a hotbed of political radicalism. And those pressing for social reform were often viewed with suspicion by the authorities. But Robert Lowe's and his committee of clerks and warehousemen pressed ahead with their campaign to persuade their employers to grant them half a day off every week, changing their initial request from a Friday to a Saturday half-day holiday. I've brought you here because I've got a document here that I think you're going to be very interested in. Take this out. It's a little bit oh, fragile. You unroll it and I'll weigh it down. It's, as you can see, a, a scroll. For obtaining the half holiday, Robert J. Lowe's... What does that say? says, Honorary... Secretary. Secretary. And here are the bosses. We... The undersigned bankers, merchants, manufacturers, and calico printers of Manchester, at the respectful solicitation of those in our employment, agree to close our places of business at one o'clock every Saturday afternoon and to allow our servants to leave for the day. Whoa. These are the merchant princes of Manchester. Between three and four hundred, all individually signed. 
These are the people they're petitioning. These are all the people who have agreed who? to grant the half holiday that Robert Lowe asked for. So the first Saturday half holiday anywhere in Britain to which these 400 merchants agreed to grant was given the 10th of November, 1843. Oh, good Lord. Well, I can't... I mean, they're astonishing. And it's achieved by Robert Lowe. My great-great-grandfather. Absolutely. Wonderful. Wonderful. So after the success of Robert's half-holiday campaign, what next? Can you fill in the blanks? In 1845, Robert gives up his job as a clerk and he sets himself up as a publisher and a printer. He runs it as a business, but he also begins to print this the Lancashire Witches Holiday Herald. This is his means to expand campaigning for the half holiday through this... Magazine? Yes. It's a collection of stories, political articles, poems, campaigning for the half holiday to be extended to the needlewomen. OK, so these women are... Needlewomen in the 1840s are amongst the most exploited and put upon workers in Britain. These girls worked in the most horrific conditions, in rooms, often in the back of shops, poorly lit, very little ventilation. They're preparing all these beautiful, beautiful gowns, these amazing hats for the shops at the front, for the witch women to buy. And they're working up to 19 hours a day, even really quite young children. Up to, there, there are reports of them working up to 19 hours a day with nothing but a bucket in the corner for their toilet. This is the Manchester Times mm -hmm. in 1845. And here is a speech by Robert Lowe's. Ah. To the principals in the retail millinery, dress and straw bonnet making establishments of the Manchester. Ladies and gentlemen, we call upon the whole body of employers to listen to the painful outcry of human suffering, to respect the sympathy of the public, and to agree upon such steps as will check the growth of these destructive evils and yield to those who suffer by them a brief period of healthful breathing time and rest. Ooh, I can hear him saying this. No, justice to our own consciences, to the laws of God and to the established usages of society demand its discontinuance. So what success did he have with speeches like this? Well, a month after this speech was given, there was a response here in the Manchester Courier. The result has been that 160 establishments signed an agreement to close on the Saturday afternoon. This noble example has been followed by the wine and spirit merchants, saddlers, the Crown Plate Glass Company, etc. The ironmongers have nearly agreed, and the tailors have already gained their holiday. Oof. This is a staggering result. The news of the half holiday spreads like wildfire across the country. Uh, we have cities like Bradford and Norwich very rapidly commencing their own half holidays based on the principles of Robert Lowe's and his committee. By the 1870s, the needlewomen in London have their half holiday. And we start to see the evolution of the weekend as we understand it now. So we can say that not only is Robert Lowe's your great-great-grandfather, but he can also be viewed as the grandfather of the modern weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, the negative side of that is that actors have to work at the weekend because everybody else is n not. <laughs> <laughs>